All right, so the quiz is on Tuesday. It'll cover 3.1 to 3.3. I would guess most of the problems are probably going to come from tonight's homework. So this homework tonight is going to be much longer than last night's homework. But that's good. We have the long homework now, so then next week we will be going to homecoming mode. We kind of going to cruise control. All right, what do we got? 10, 30, 40. Number 10. What? Okay, this looks like a problem on the quiz right here. So I'm going to give you a graph. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm not going to draw it accurately because you have it in your book. And they're asking you, at what point is the function differentiable? Okay, that's my main concern. I just want you to understand what the word differentiable means which is smooth and continuous, right? It means it has a derivative, okay? So, look at this graph. I'll give you something like this on next Tuesday. At what values of x is this function not differentiable? What would you say? Yeah, right here and here. You got a sharp point there and a sharp point there. And where is that in your book? It looks like negative two and two. Oh, negative two and two. <laughs> Good enough for me right there. Come on, those other questions are just nonsense. Differentiable, that's, that's what you need to know. Okay, number 30. Where is number 30? What? Are you guys putting these problems on the board because they're just even numbers? <laughs> is that it? You're playing the game? Well, that's good because you know what? I already told you yesterday, this is, this is on the quiz. Could you use your calculator? Yeah, you have to. Oh. Yeah. Can anybody do it without? I'll give, you, I'll give you all the money in my wallet. No, I take that back. I'll give you $5 if you can do this without a calculator. Graph it. Yeah, graph it without a calculator and then look at it and figure out what, what function that is. So do you guys remember how to graph the derivative of a function? d over dx. Negative natural log absolute value cosine x such that x equals x. So you graph this on your calculator, and I'm going to tell you what what screen to be graphing in. It's probably going to be zoom trig or D window trig. Two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. If you graph this on your calculator, you should see this. Let's use a different color. <gasps> And then you look at that and go, hey, you somebody. Yeah, that's tangent. Exactly. So again, you're going to have to know your base graphs, yeah? So the derivative of this appears to be this. But we really can't say for sure until we actually do it algebraically, but I'll tell you right now, yes, the derivative of that is that. You guys understand that when you graph it, you really don't know. I mean, it looks like a tangent graph, but how do you know it's exactly a tangent graph? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. All right. Okay, so that's it. Here, for those of you still wondering how to play the game in this class, <laughs> see, you did this home, did you do this for homework? So this is on your calculator right now? Just leave it on your calculator. So Tuesday's quiz, you just change that to whatever I give you. <laughs> We don't have to, like, we just write the answer, yeah, on the, on the, we don't have to draw the graph. Well, if you draw the graph, that can, you might be able to get partial credit at least, right? Because what if yours is wrong? Then I have no choice but to give you a fatal error, right? But then at least if you draw your graph, and then your answer looks like is correct for the graph you drew, then that can give you half credit, yeah? <laughs> but if you only have the answer, it's either all or nothing, right? And then number 40. <coughs> True or false? <laughs> Come on. 50 50 chance. If f has a derivative at x equal a, then f is continuous. Duh! This is what differentiable means. If a function has a derivative, that means it's differentiable. That's what differentiable means. It has a derivative. And if, if the function is differentiable, that means it's smooth and continuous. So they're saying if f has a derivative at x equal a, then f is continuous. 
Yes, because differentiable means smooth and continuous. So the answer is true. Or are you just asking that because it's even? Shameless. All right, today we're going to use, we're going to learn, oh, we're going to finish early today. Hopefully. We're going to learn the rules for computing derivatives. So from this day forward, when you do your homework, starting from 3.3, .3, not 3.1 or 3.2, 3.1 and 3.2 to compute a derivative, you've got to use the difference quotient. But now, we're going to learn shortcuts for finding derivatives. So starting from 3.3, .3, you never have to use the difference quotient again. However, on the quiz, I'm telling you right now, one of the questions is going to say, use the difference quotient to compute the derivative of this function. So no, don't. Just take the minus four. 16 is the diamond score. In fact, you know what? I think it's going to be a maxi quiz. Nice. And then who knows? It might be upgraded to an ultra maxi quiz. Because this is the only thing we're going to have next week because it's homecoming. Right, we have it early in the week and then we can just play the rest of the time. Yeah. We're gonna set up the synthesizers in the back, the microphone's gonna be hot. Oh yeah. Kata okay. Yes. <laughs> Is anybody gonna volunteer? I can play piano. Huh? I can play piano, so can a couple other people listen. No, but who's gonna sing? The microphone is gonna be hot. I'll sing. Okay, there you go. What kind of songs do you sing? I'll sing anything. Please be quiet. Okay. I gotta remember to bring all my equipment from home then. That's really hard. Yeah, that, that's good. Because what year did Jake Louie graduate? Oh, that was two years ago. Oh, because I had him for pre-calculus honors at the EB. So both times, both the homecoming week, we were just jamming. Oh, he's so good. Yeah, I mean, so we, we opened the door and we were, what's the guitar solo that's really crazy? Um, you know, journey. Oh. Don't stop believing. <laughs> and when the, the guitar solo, oh, he was just ripping. It was uh, unbelievable. Can anybody do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the first theorem. If y is equal to x to the nth power, where n is a real number, then to compute the derivative, all you have to do is go n x to the n minus 1. Now, if this were BC, I would have to prove this to you. But we're AB, you just have to be able to use it. Now, the other class asked to see the proof, though, and I showed it to them. You guys want to see it? Just yes. No. You guys want to pretend like you're in AB? No. I mean, BC. No. Yes. No. See, that's so sad. Yeah. Okay, I will. Hey. We're still going to finish early. <laughs> so, look, you set up the difference quotient. Limit, h approaches 0. f of x plus h. Sub substitute x plus h minus f of x, and then you divide the whole critter by h. This will compute the derivative, right, for any function. Now, the question is, how do you expand x plus h to the nth power? Some of you barely can do x plus h to the third. <laughs> you have to use the binomial theorem. <laughs> Does this look familiar? Well, at least tell me what the first term is going to be. x to the n, and then what's the next term? N x to the n minus 1 h. The powers of x go down by 1. The powers of h go up by 1. That's how the binomial theorem works. But what is n? Wait, but why do you have n? Because, look, look at the graph. If you have x plus h squared, is it, if you expand that, don't you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared? So it's n second round. This is 2. Right? See, that's the n. Yes. That's why, right? Oh. Expand it out. Or if you, act, if you expand x plus h cubed, you get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. See, look. Can you do it fast? Huh? This is algebra 2. <laughs> and then look. The powers of x are going down by 1. The powers of h go up by 1. The two powers always add up to 3. That's the pattern of the binomial theorem. Except this is for 2 and this is 3. This is for n. OK, so what's the next one going to be? h squared. n. People with PCH, come on. n minus 1 over 
2 factorial. The power of x goes down by 1. The power of h goes up by 1. And the thing just keeps on going. It keeps on going. Because sometimes, see, if, that, if n is a whole number, it stops. But if it's a negative number or a fraction, it just keeps going forever. Minus x to the n. And then you divide everything by h. And just like normal, this cancels that. Can I factor out an h in the top? Yes. Yeah, you bet you could be. So you get n x to the n minus 1 plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x to the n minus 2 h. And it keeps on going. Divided by h. These cancel out. Now can I plug in h and get something? What happens when I plug in 0 for h here? This goes to 0. And then this term has an h squared in it, so that's going to go to 0. The next one has an h cubed, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So what's the only thing that's left? n x to the n minus 1. There you go, just proof. See, that's the difference between a, b, and b, c right here. I like a, b. <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's why b, c, h, that's why we learned the binomial theorem, because the came up right in the beginning of the course. You have to know the binomial there. What's the binomial there? Do we have to know? Huh? Do we have to know the binomial there? No, we're AB. Oh. You just got to know x plus y cubed. <laughs> cubed is the highest you got to be able to do in AB. So, but some of us still don't even know. OK, let's look at some examples. If this is y and the derivative, let's make a chart. See, this is how easy calculus is. Calculus is so easy, the concepts. It's the pre-calculus part that gets you in trouble. OK, what if y equals x squared? Using the power rule right here, what is the derivative? All you got to do, if you haven't figured this out, you put the power in the front, and then you reduce the power by 1. So to take a derivative, all you have to be able to do is be able to subtract 1. OK, so what? 2, put the 2 in the front, and then subtract 1 from 2, you get 1. So 2x to the first, which is just 2x. Finished. Isn't that a lot better than doing difference quotient? OK, what about x to the 7? 7x to the? Six. See how easy? Imagine doing a difference quotient for that. You would have to go x plus h to the 7. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why we have the shortcut. OK, you guys think you're good now, yeah? What about square root of x? Now, the square root of x is the same thing as x to the what power? Right? And so now I can apply the power rule, and you get x to the negative half. You just got to be able to subtract 1. OK, now here's the hard part. And then you got to simplify it to this. Can do? What? What do you mean, no? x to the negative half means 1 over x to the half, but 1 half power means square root, right? See? What, what's hard? The calculus or the algebra? One part. <laughs> exactly. Okay, what about 1 over x, which is the same as x to the negative 1? Applying the power rule? Negative 1x. Of course, we don't write 1. To the? Negative 2. And then, simplify it to negative 1 over x squared. That one can do, right? Okay, well, you guys think you're good now? Yeah. 1 over cube root of x. Okay, now that's the same thing as x to the what power? Negative 1 third. Apply the power rule and you get? Negative 1 third x to the? What? you got to be able to subtract 1. Negative 4 thirds. See, you can't even subtract 1. It's a fraction, Mr. Park. <laughs> okay, then you got to be able to simplify it to negative 1 over 3x cube root of x. Wait, how you oh, what? One of them is one. It's called algebra 1, people. Can I review that? That's one and one third. Thank you. So, isn't this. Okay. X to the 4 thirds, right? Negative exponent means it's in the denominator, right? And then, isn't 4 thirds the same thing as x to the 1 times x to the 1 third because you add the exponents? Yes. And 
so that's x and that's x to the one third. Ooh. Or you can think of it as, or another way to think about it is that's the cube root of x to the four, but you can bring out an x cubed as an x, right? The cube root of x cubed is x. Okay, you know what? We're 80. Just leave the answer like this, <laughs> and nobody will get hurt. And just pretend you know what it means. That's sad. Okay, now let's go back to the easy one. I forgot, I, I, I didn't do the easy one at the beginning. We should have done the easy one first. What about x? One. What about x to the first? The derivative is one. Because look, that, isn't that like x to the one? So applying the power rule, that's one x to the zero, which is one. But see, sometimes it's just easier to think of what the graph looks like. What does y equal x look like? It looks like that. What's the slope of this line? One, because the derivative tells you the slope, right? And a line always has a constant slope. The slope doesn't change throughout the whole line. Okay, so if that's the case, what's the derivative of seven? Okay. Think of the graph. What, that has a graph? Are you kidding me? Y equals seven is a horizontal line. Seven units above the x-axis. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Oh, so the derivative of any constant will be zero. Yeah, because it's a horizontal line. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. Okay, so this is called the power rule. Easy, yeah? See, that's why I tell you, calculus concepts are easy, but see, we simplify it. That, that's what's going to get you. Okay, next theorem. If y equals a constant times a function, and you guys know what a constant is, right? Like 5, negative 4, pi, right? So if you have a constant times a function, to take the derivative, you take the constant and you throw it on the side like an unwanted pet, yeah. and then you multiply it by the derivative of the function. You guys know what throw it on the side like an unwanted pet means, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Get on the side of the pet. Okay. <laughs> so, y equal, let me give you an example, 5x to the 4. Is that a constant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so to take the derivative, you throw the 5 on the side, like that, like an unwanted pet, and then you multiply it by the derivative of that, which is 4x four, four four cubed. cubed. And so your final answer is 20x cubed. That's how we apply the theorem. But in real life, you can see that if you put the 4 in the front, you can just go 5 times 4 is 20, right? We can bypass that step. I just put that step in so you can see how this theorem is being applied. OK, one more example then. If y <coughs> equals 7x squared, what is the derivative? 14x. 14x to the first. This is easy. Okay, and then the last theorem, oh no, I forgot they combined two sections in one. What is the second one called? Um, I don't know, is that, I don't think there's a name for that. Yeah. Okay, so what if you have a sum of two functions? I don't know, the book might have a name on it, but then you guys don't read the book. If you have a sum or differences of two functions, then to take the derivative, I'm just going to use all the different notations of the derivative so that you guys get used to it. All you have to do is take the derivative of the first, the derivative of the second, and add those together. So in other words, if you have terms, you just take the derivatives term by term. So that's perfect for polynomials. So example, what if you have a polynomial? Uh, uh, 2x to the 4 plus 3x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5x plus 6. How do you take the derivative of that? Well, you just take the derivative of each term, one at a time. What's the derivative of the first term? 8x cubed. And then the next one? 9x squared. And then 8x. And then 5. And then 0. Finished! That's applying this third theorem right here. You just take, when you have terms, you guys know what terms are, right? Add it or subtract it together, you just take the derivative term by term. Now, if you can take a first of one derivative, you must be able to take another one. Yeah, we call that the second derivative, which is like that. That's the second derivative. Huh? No, no, that's primes. If you get to like the fourth one, it's IV, or is it four of those? Oh, is that how you do it? 
No, I'll tell you. Just, just, just wait until we get there. No, I've seen that too, but that's not what we're going to do. Okay, so all you have to do is take the derivative of the derivative. What's the derivative of this? 24x squared plus 18x plus 8 plus 0. There you go. But then if you can take a second derivative, you can take a third. Keep going. 48x plus 18 plus, and then you can take a fourth derivative, a third derivative, you can take a fourth, you can take a fourth, a fifth. Yeah, this can go on forever. Now, you guys are class of 2015, right? Yeah. So I can guarantee you on the next test or the quiz, I'm no. going to give you the 2015 derivative. So how do you, oh. Okay, like what if I give you this problem? Compute the 2015 derivative. Now, <laughs> Mr. Park, there's no way I'm going to do that. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. First thing. Am I going to really break 2015 hash marks when you guys got to count them? No. So once we get past the second derivative, we normally do this. Now, why do I have to put it in parentheses? Oh, Because otherwise it's going to confuse you with y cubed. So if it's in parentheses, that means the third derivative. So if you can take the third derivative, you can do the fourth derivative, which is 48. What's the fifth derivative? Zero. Zero, and can you see starting from here? It's all zero. So therefore, the 2015 derivative is zero. <laughs> see? You guys can handle. Unless, it's, unless the power drop is 2000. Unless I have something up my sleeve. No. No, I do, I do. But don't worry, by the time we get there, it's going to be easy. With like an accident, it's that's so okay. Two, 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 two. Wait, so what, is the, what does that even mean, like the fourth? Oh, okay, so in, in terms of physics, if this is the, we're going to learn this couple chapters from now, not a couple sections from now. If this is position, if you take the derivative, what's the slope of the position graph? Velocity. Physics? Yeah, this is your instantaneous velocity. And then what's the slope of the velocity graph? Acceleration. Acceleration. And then what's the slope of the acceleration graph, physics people? Derivative is something. The rate at which the acceleration is changing. There's a name for that. I'm pretty sure it's in your physics book. It's called <laughs> I give you the vowels. A, a. A. No, I gave the vowels. What's it? A. <laughs> These are the vowels. L. L. N. H. L. C. T. You said L. <laughs> what? U. R. Okay, you lost it. <laughs> it's over. It's over. R is oh, somebody, somebody said R. Yes. I thought we lost. P. I always say P. Fern. Jerk. jerk. It's jerk. You did not learn that. You guys didn't learn it? Not yet. Jerk. No. But whether you learned it or not, I bet you wasn't in your physics book. We don't read the book, Mr. Park. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so as far as basic physics, the first and the second derivatives have basic applications, right? But that doesn't mean we can't take more derivatives. And you guys, and you guys in um, AP Econ, right? Derivative is simply the slope of the line, like I told you yesterday. The slope of the, mar the revenue graph is simply the marginal revenue. So whenever you hear the word marginal in AP Econ, you think slope or derivative. Are you guys doing that already? See, it's so... No, because you're not taking me to econ. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to take it. Okay, we got to learn two more theorems. And then we're done. Hopefully we finish a little early. Okay, what would happen if you have a product of two functions like this? What if you had, I don't know, x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1? And I ask you to compute the derivative. Can I just do this? Oh, this is easy, Mr. Park. Just take the derivative of the first one, which is 1. And then take the derivative of the second one, which is 2x minus 1. And just multiply those two together. You can tell from the tone of my voice, no. If anybody ever does this on a test, this is what we call a triple fatal error. If the problem is worth 6 points, you just got yourself a minus 16 system. Go by what I write, not by what I say. <laughs> so you can't do that. So what do you do, Mr. Park? 
we use the product rule. Okay, yeah, you can multiply it out. But sometimes it's really bad to multiply it out. So we use what we call, well, or sometimes you can't multiply it out because what if it's this times like a trig function there? Oh, well, I guess you could, but it's going to be even more complicated. This is how the product rule works. If you have a product, of two functions, you guys know what product means, right? Yeah. To take the derivative, this is it. You take the derivative of the first, you leave the second one alone. Plus, leave the first one alone, derivative of the second. No. That's the product rule. So basically, it's like taking turns. No, don't, don't take that. Don't take that. It's just taking turns. Derivative of the first, leave the second one alone, then you take the derivative of the second, leave the first one alone. It's like the... Don't think that. Don't think that. That's what he said. Oh. Don't think that. Just think. Take turns. Okay, you can think whatever you want. Yeah, I think it's not he said something about that looks like the sign. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It does. yeah, but then but this is derivative. <laughs> but same pattern. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't stop you. <laughs> okay, so how do I how do I apply it to this? Okay, so take the derivative of the first. Leave the second one alone. Plus, now you leave the first one alone, times the derivative of the second. 2x minus 1. There you go, that's the answer. Okay, now here's the hard part. Simplify it. Because on the, on the quiz and the test, quiz is four points. You take the derivative correctly, you get two. You want the other two, simplify it. You have to simplify it because ultimately our goal is to make a number line for it. Because in this chapter, we're learning how to compute derivatives. Next chapter, we're going to learn how to use them to solve problems. And in order to solve problems, we have to know when is the derivative positive and when is it negative. So in other words, we're going to have to make number lines for every derivative that we take. Which means you have to simplify that and have it in factor form. Okay, so how do I simplify this thing? Just multiply it all up. Okay, I'll do the first one. <laughs> and then this one, you got a foil, so what is that? 2x squared minus x plus 2, so plus x minus 1? Yes. And then, oh, these cancel. These cancel. So all you're left with is 3x squared. That's a pretty nice answer, Monsieur Park. Can you guys do that for the other two points, though? Yeah. I mean, this is, this is on the easy end of the scale. It's like quite involved algebra. <coughs> now, I'm going to teach you a lesson here. Watch this. Yes, you can use the product rule, but if you can simplify the problem before you start, that can save you a lot of time. So what if you have this problem? Like, a, like when I look at this, I'm thinking, hey, you somebody. Oh, that's probably sure. this, one. this is the sum of cubes, that's right. This is x cubed plus 1. Can everybody do that? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> well, if you can't, then just do it. Well, you can either multiply it out if you want, you will get that, or you can just use the product rule. Right? I mean, it doesn't matter as long as you do correct mathematics. But come on, when you come out of algebra 2, this is supposed to be engraved in your brain. And then now, look how easy this is. What's the derivative of this? 3x squared. Finished. Same answer. But look, I didn't have to do all that work. So the lesson to be learned is, if you can simplify the problem before you start, simplify it. Are you guys going to remember that? Yep. When you're doing your homework Monday morning? Um. <laughs> Except Ichimura, the following Monday morning. <laughs> okay, wait, Mr. Park, if there's a product rule, must be there's a quotient rule then, yeah? Yes, this will be the last thing to go over today. Okay, so what happens if you have like a quotient? 3x over x squared plus 1. See how it's a quotient? Can I just do this? Take the derivative of the top. 3, and divide that by the derivative of the bottom. No. Again, if anybody ever does this, triple fatal error. Minus 18. <laughs> no, you must use the quotient rule. Now, the quotient rule is not as easy to remember as the product rule. Because the product rule, you just got to remember, take turns, right? Well, you forgot it already. <laughs> Here is the quotient rule. If you have a quotient, then to take the derivative, you do this. Oh, okay. 
that's how you do the quotient rule. So you take turns first. Yeah, you take turns, but see, there's a minus sign in between. So you have, you have to do the proper one first. You know, I mean, A minus B is not the same thing as B minus A. Mm. Whereas in the product rule, it doesn't matter which one you do first, because A plus B is the same as B plus A, but in this one, you have to do the correct one first. Now, every year, students, they just memorize it wrong, so that's why mathematicians have come up with this rhyme to help you. Just like when you're, you learned a quadratic formula, didn't your teacher teach you that song? Yes. When you first learned it, but you don't do the song now, do you? I don't know. Somebody said Pop Goes the Weasel. Or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what it is. When I was in school, we just memorized these. That's what we did. But then we're AB, so we're, we're used to being sad. Okay, now it's here. Watch this. This is high, this is low. High, low, you get it? High, low. And then when I say D, that means take the derivative of it. Okay. You know, like, like this means, like this means take the derivative of x squared, right? Yeah. So when I say D, that means take the derivative of it. Okay, so low D high minus high D low all over denominator squared we go. What? Listen again. Low D high minus high D low all over denominator squared we go. Say it. Low D high minus high D low. All over denominator squared we go. One more time. Low D high minus high D low. All over denominator squared we go. Now, some of you are going, well, Mr. Park, see, so that means you have to start with low. See, if you start with high, you're going to go high D low minus low d high, all over denominator squared we go. It doesn't rhyme, so that's wrong. You know what I mean? It has to rhyme. So that's why you got to start with low. Everybody got it? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can apply it to this. This is high, this is low. Here, let's do it down here. High, low. Okay, so what do I start with? Low. low. So low, d high, means the derivative of high, minus high, D low, so what's the derivative of x squared plus 1? All over denominator squared we go. There you go. <laughs> so easy. So that's two out of four points. You want the other two points? Simplify that. Now, how would you simplify this? Would you just multiply out the whole top? Or do you notice that there's a 3 and a 3? So factor that out. I don't know. There's a 3 and a 3. Factor out the 3. Oh. Well, you're either going to do it now or later. It's up to you. Now. Okay, factor out the 3 now. What's going to be left? x squared plus 1. Factor out the 3. Two minus 2x squared. Oh, but that's just 3 times. You can add these two together, people. 1 minus x squared all over x squared plus 1 squared. And then that can be factored. 1 plus x times 1 minus x. There you go. Now we're ready for the number line. You have to be able to simplify because I told you, next chapter, you're going to have to be able to tell when this is positive or negative. So you put it in factored form. Now, okay, let's just, this is what you're going to do. Next chapter. Okay, everybody can take derivatives. Okay, that's easy. You just follow the dumb rhyme, right? But now you got to simplify it into this so that you can go, what makes the top zero? Negative 1 and 1. What makes the bottom zero? Plus or minus i, but we don't do complex numbers, right? So, you guys remember how to test the number line? Think of a number bigger than 1. 2. Plug it in. Positive, positive, negative, positive. So it will be negative. And without doing any work, how do I know that's positive? Because 1 came from this factor has an odd power, so it's going to change, right? And then, how do I know that's minus? Because negative 1 came from this factor, odd power, so it's going to change. And that's what you're going to have to do. Because in order to solve problems, you've got to know when a derivative is positive or negative. Because that's going to tell us something. But not right now. Is that like what you're sketching in the graph? Exactly. Exactly. 
Okay, one last example, we're done. Y equals x cubed. No! Silence. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. X to the fourth plus one over x to the fourth. Okay, Mr. Park, I see a quotient. I'm going to use the quotient rule. Yeah, what's wrong with that? The quotient. So here we go. Low d high. What's d high? 3x. What? You gotta be able to put the 4 in the front, people. 4 hex cube, low d high, minus high d low. What's d low? 4 x cubed. Oh, we cannot put a number in the front. All over denominator squared we go. Okay. Okay, now simplify it. Okay, now do you want to just multiply it out or do you see, oh, I see a 4x cubed there and a 4x cubed there. I'm going to factor it out. Okay. Factor out the 4x cubed, then what's going to be left? x to the 4 minus x to the 4 minus. What did minus? You got to distribute that minus sign. See, it's algebra. Calculus, easy concept. Algebra, hard. All over x to the, what do I do with the exponents? Uh, 6 or 8? 8. Six. Six. Eight. You multiply when it's outside the parentheses. See what this is? Okay, let's simplify this. This cancels that. So you get negative 4x cubed over x to the 8. What do I do with the exponents? Subtraction. Negative 4 over x to the 5th. Easy. However, instead of doing all that work, remember I just told you, if you can simplify it before you start, simplify. What do we do, I already told you this how many times, when we see a single term in the denominator? Lift and separate. Did you guys ask your parents what that means? Mommy, what does lift and separate mean? Go to your room. <laughs> okay, so, this over this, 1 plus this over this. Yeah, but let's write it as x to the negative 4. Because then it's, we're preparing it for differentiation, right? So when you take the derivative, what's the derivative of 1? What's the derivative of that? Negative 4 x to the negative 5. Finished! Can you see it's the same thing? So again, the lesson to be learned, if you can simplify before you start, do it. Because it saves you work. Wow. Okay, we're done. You have, oh, how come another class is faster? Five minutes left. Yeah.